Argentina, ranked third in the world by FIFA, are one of the greatest footballing nations in the World Cup and have now qualified for the 18th time. Only Brazil and Germany can claim more. The South American Giants look to lift the cup for a third time out in Qatar. Argentina stormed onto the scene in the very first World Cup and lit up the scoring charts, netting 18 times on their run to the very first final. The 1-0 over France was the smallest scoreline in their first match, but the scoring really started in the second match with a barnstormer of a game that ended 6-3 over Mexico. They would then net three more times to blast Chile apart. It was a fledgling ragtag bunch for the USA in the semifinal, and Argentina once again netted six times to steamroll into the first ever World Cup final versus hosts Uruguay. This one was definitely a tale of two halves as the Argentines went into halftime up 2-1, to one, but Uruguay came out strong in the second half with three goals and dashed Argentina's hopes. The tournament in Italy was a long trip for just the one game versus the Swedes. It would see them lose in heartbreaking fashion and now after only one match. The men from Argentina would not feature in the World Cup again until it was in Sweden in 1958. Drawn into a disgusting group with West Germany and Czechoslovakia, they knew it would be tough. They opened the tournament with a disappointing 3-1 loss to the West Germans, but bounced back in the second game with a 3-1 win over Northern Ireland. They would need a performance versus the mighty Czechoslovakians in the third game, but unfortunately they would not get it and were blown away 6-1 to crash out in disappointing fashion. They would once again have a rough go of it four years later in Chile in 1962, but it was just the short trip across the border. Their first match versus Bulgaria was an encouraging but hard-fought 1-0 win. They then faced the English and were soundly beaten 3-1 to to set up a must-win in the third match. It was not meant to be and they were unable to net versus the Hungarian menace and relegated to the short trip home. The Albi Celeste were back in England 1966 with another really tough group in prospect. They opened the tournament against Spain at Villa Park with a hard-fought win 2-1. It was the West German powerhouse up next, and the defense prevailed as no one scored in a drab nil-nil. A win was needed over the Swiss in the third match, and the men in white and blue pulled out the 2-0 to make it out of the group, first time since the inaugural tournament. But they would meet the hosts at Wembley, and were unable to stop the budding momentum of eventual champions, and it was the playing home. The South American Giants would skip the tournament in Mexico and were back in West Germany in 1974. The group looked promising, but a hard-fought loss 3-2 versus Poland was the worst possible start. They followed this result with a tepid nil-nil versus Italy. Then the game versus Haiti was a must-win, and the Giants were able to defeat the Minnows 4-1 to move on to the second group stage. It was a horror group in prospect, and it started out as such with a 4-0 loss to the Dutch. Then it was the Samba men from Brazil in the second game for the first time in the World Cup. They were unable to defeat their rivals, going down 2-1. Already eliminated, the 0-0 versus East Germany was irrelevant, and they were headed home. Hosts in 1978 meant that expectations were sky high, and the group they were drawn into was daunting at best, and nightmare at worst. But the Alba Celeste were able to notch a great 2-0 win in the opener versus Hungary. It was France up next, and they were able to repeat the scoreline for another win. Despite the loss to the Italians in the third match, they were on the second group stage. It was a rematch with Poland, in which they were able to gain some revenge for the previous tournament, with a two-goal effort from Mario Kimpas going into the next match with some momentum. It was the South American rivals once again, and they held the Brazilians to a nil-nil draw. A monstrous 6-0 win over Peru in the third match with another two goals from Kempis saw them into the final versus the Dutch. They were on their second straight final despite missing their talisman Johan Cruyff. Mario Kempis was the star and he netted first to take the lead in the final. They would battle for a long time, but the Orgemen were able to equalize in the 82nd minute to send it to overtime. Kempis popped up once again, and Bertoni added one for good measure, and the Albi Celeste lifted their first cup on home soil. Champions of the world.
The holders were back and added one Diego Maradona to the squad for the trip to Spain in 1982. They opened the tournament with an underwhelming loss to Belgium, 1-0 at the Camp Nou, however. They would then bounce back with a great win over Hungary, 4-1, to see Maradona bag his first two goals in the World Cup. They cruised into the next round with a 2-0 win over El Salvador in the third match. Unfortunately, the second group stage was a bit more unforgiving. They would go down 2-1 to the Italians to set up another must-win versus their favorite rivals, Brazil. It wasn't meant to be, and the men in yellow tossed them out, 3-1. Argentina were back in Mexico 1986 for a short trip to the north. Another tough group in prospects saw them open the tournament against the South Koreans with a strong 3-1 win. It was Giants Italy in the second match, and it took a Maradona goal to draw the Azari 1-1. Meaning they had to win versus Bulgaria in the third game, the Abi Celeste would triumph two goals to nil. They were on to the round of 16 match versus their South American neighbors, Uruguay. A tight 1-0 saw them on to the quarterfinal for possibly the most famous game in Argentinian history. Maradona literally grabbed every headline in this one versus the English. Un poco con la cabeza de Maradona y otro poco con la mano de Dios was the famous line in the press conference after the match. Maradona popped up in the box to punch the wall home over keeper Peter Shilton, and the referee did not see it, thus awarded the goal. If that wasn't enough, it would be roughly five minutes later that Maradona dribbled the entire England team and netted again in what has been dubbed the goal of the century. These two goals were enough to see them on to the semifinal, a 2-1 win. With Dios on their side, Maradona would net twice more against Belgium to send the Albi Celeste into the final versus rivals West Germany. Things looked to be going to plan as Argentina led 2-0 in the 74th minute, but Rumanega netted and just seven minutes later, Rudy Voller scored the equalizer with just nine minutes to play. Maradona wouldn't have it and was able to slide in Buruchuga for the winner in the 84th minute to seal the victory for Argentina and cement Maradona in this 86 side into football league legend, champions of the world once again. Defending champs in Italia 1990 were looking at a winnable group, at least on paper, and their first game matched them with Cameroon to send zero. It was a shock 1-0 loss that meant they needed to bring a lot more to the second match versus the Soviet Union. They would manage just that with a nice 2-0 victory, but there was still work to be done in the third game. The 1-1 draw with Romania was enough to see them squeeze through for a matchup with old rivals Brazil in a round of 16. It was tight and testy and ended 1-0 to the Argentines in Turin to send them into the quarterfinal against Yugoslavia. This one would take penalties, but the men in white and blue stripes were able to convert 3-5 of five to move on to the semifinals. The hosts awaited, knowing it would be a tough match. It would take them hitting four or five penalties this time as it went one to one to overtime, then to the shootout. But they were through to their second straight final. And who else was waiting for them but the same opponent in West Germany? This one was quite the gladiator battle as Maradona was marked by three guys the whole game, and Pedro Monzon would become the first ever player sent off in a World Cup final. His countryman, De Zotti, would join him right after the Germans converted a penalty in the 85th, and it was the only goal of the game. The Argentine dream of repeating the heights of 86 was dashed in truly soul-crushing fashion. A tumultuous few years for Diego Maradona would nonetheless see him back in the squad in USA 94 for a tournament which started off quite well. He would net in the first game, famously running up to the camera after scoring. Batista hat trick would see off Greece 4 0. The second match versus Nigeria likewise was a strong win for the Argentines, but Maradona would be led from the field by tournament officials for a random drug test. The legend of the past few years in Argentina was roughly ousted from the tournament after testing positive for banned substances and was sent home right then and there. It would be a telling blow to the Abbey Celeste, and they would go on to lose the next match to Bulgaria. However, it was enough to see them into the next round to face Romania. Despite Batistuta netting again, the loss of Maradona seemed to weigh too heavily on the Argentinian side, and they crashed out 3-2 with a disappointing end to one of the world's most enigmatic players of all time. 
Patti Stupa would once again lead the line for the Argentines four years on in France 98, taking over from Maradona last time around, and they would cruise through the group stage. Japan were up first, and they handled business 1-0 before absolutely smashing Jamaica 5-0 at the Parc de Prince. They would then defeat surprise debutants of Croatia in the third match for a perfect group stage. It was England who were still not over the match from 12 years previously up next, and they were out for understandable revenge. A hotly contested match ensued and went 2-2 two to, two to penalties, where the Abbey Celeste just edged the Brits without their talisman, David Beckham. They met Holland and Dennis Bergkamp in the quarterfinal and would concede one of the greatest goals in World Cup history to Mr. Bergkamp himself laid on to see them knocked out 2-1 in sensational fashion, despite Lopez scoring Argentina's 100th World Cup goal. Batistuta was still around in 2002, but they also added one Ernan Crespo for the showing in the Far East. Even still, it was not one they'll want to remember. They were able to defeat Nigeria 1-0 in the first match, but met bitter rivals England in the second. The 1-0 loss would set up a match with Sweden in the third game, where they needed a result. The 1-1 draw would not be enough, and they were out at the group stage for the first time in 40 years. They were back four years later for the tournament in Germany, drawn into a spicy-looking group that they expected to qualify from. Surprise! Entrants Ivory Coast and Didier Drogba were up first, and they were able to notch a 2-1 victory. Next up was fledgling nation Serbia and Montenegro, and it was a 6-0 smashing success that would see one Leo Messi score his first ever World Cup goal. The 0-0 draw with the Dutch in the final group game was plenty to see them over the line into the round of 16 matchup with Mexico. It would go 1-1 to, to overtime before some absolute magic off the boot of Maxi Rodriguez volleyed home the winner from the edge of the box to send them through to the quarterfinals in stunning scenes of jubilation. However, the might of the hosts could not be denied as they played Germany 1-1 to, to penalty kicks, and it all fell apart, only able to net two of their five shots. Their old nemesis would see them on the plane home once again. Expectations were sky-high in 2010 South Africa for the Abbey Celeste. All eyes on the talisman Messi, whom actually wouldn't net in the entire tournament, but whose presence on the field was invaluable. They began the cup with a 1-0 win over Nigeria, before thrashing the South Koreans 4-1 thanks to a Gonzalo Higuain hat-trick. The 2-0 win over Greece in the third match was enough to send them into the round of 16 for a rematch with Mexico at the same stage as the tournament four years earlier. Carlos Tevez netted twice, a bit less sensationally, but they would secure another win and move on to another rematch of Germany's quarterfinal against the Germans themselves. This one is rather forgettable, as the Argentines forgot to show up and were run over rough shot 4 to nil, bowing out to the same opposition at the same stage of two tournaments run. The tournament, on the home soil of hated rivals Brazil, had Messi and co. licking their chops at a chance to lift the cup in the nation of one of their most bitter rivals. The group stage would turn out to be the Leo Messi show as he netted in all three games. They opened with a 2-1 win over Bosnia-Herzegovina before Iran took them 0-0 to the 93rd minute. It was there that Messi popped up with a classic run in from the right and a brilliant curler to win the game 1-0. Messi would score twice more against Nigeria in the third game for a perfect group stage. This would see them into the round of 16 versus Switzerland, and it would take extra time in Sao Paulo, but Di Maria would net in the overtime to see them on to the quarterfinals. A tight game versus Eden Hazard and the Belgians would see Iguain score for the close 1 to 0 win. The semi-final matched them up against the Flying Dutchman himself, and it would be another tight, tough affair, nil-nil to penalties. Netting four times in the shootout was plenty to see them through to the final, once again against the mighty German machine. Just as the rest of the tournament, this game was hotly contested but low scoring. Mario Goza would be subbed on in the 87th minute as the game went into extra time. Penalties were looming when he popped up in the box and sunk Argentina with a wonderful. 
I still remember Messi being awarded the MVP of the tournament and immediately handing the trophy off to some random behind him, tears streaming down his face as Argentina lost in their final in devastation. There may have been a bit of a hangover going into Russia 2018, but the group stage for the Albi Celeste looked like a winnable one. Surprise qualifiers Iceland were up first and they would shock Argentina with a 1-1 draw. Messi and co. wouldn't show up for the second match against Croatia and went down 3-0 to the endurance minute in the checkered red and white. They took a 2-0 win over Nigeria for the third time running in the group stage to see them through to the round of 16 bout against France. This was a barnstormer of a game in a tournament that had quite a few high scoring matches. In the end though, Mbappe and co. were just too much and knocked them in from Argentina out of the tournament in sensational fashion 4-3. It's Messi's last cup, and Argentina have a really mean-looking side headed to Qatar for the latest edition of the tournament. In a group they know they should win, first up is Saudi Arabia, then Mexico, and they finish the group stage against Poland. All eyes are on the talisman, and the hope of a nation, and many of the neutrals as well, is to see Leo Messi cement his name as the greatest to ever play the game by lifting a cup like Maradona before him and becoming world champion. 